Okay, so should I start then? Or should we wait for one or two more minutes? Yes, you're good to go. Okay, awesome. Uh, welcome everyone. Um, so our talk today is on product management in different stages of a product. Uh, it is uh, by Martin Stahl, who is the CPO at Kurali, one of my favorite people I've worked with. Uh, and uh, as, an, as a product manager, as a learning product manager, I myself is very excited and curious to learn more about the topic from Martin himself. Um, before I hand over the presentation to Martin, I would like to tell you a bit about myself. I have been working in product people for almost one year now. And I have worked on many B2C, B2B products uh, from edtech, health tech, and e-commerce. And I'm very lucky to be working here on product people with many different clients. And Kurali was one of the client. And we have a speaker from Kurali today. Uh, before I, again, hand over the presentation to Martin, I'll tell you a bit about product people, what we do. Our mission is pretty simple and clear that our mission is to basically help companies discover and deliver great products faster. And we have a product management community who we empower through sharing knowledge generously while doing all the unglamorous uh, product manager work, product manager work um, on interim basis. That is basically three months to six months, depending on the contract. We onboard super fast, align teams and deliver outcomes. We have 14 house product managers working as in terms, and there is a community of 20,000 members, uh, which we are currently uh, in touch with. Um, just a quick icebreaker here. Um, we have two questions for you, just to know our audience, people who are joining us. Uh, two questions that we have uh, for you to answer are, Number one, do you fully understand your company's business model? Yes or no? You can either tell us in the comments or just use the pop-up that you see on your Zoom screen. Second question is, do you currently know the phase of the product lifecycle your product is in right now? I'll give you a minute or two to answer the questions. Um, and... While you answer, if you just cannot answer through the poll that you see, you can just use the chat and let us know your answers. And if you want to tell a reason or explain, feel free to do that. So do we have some answers coming in? Yes. Those who have an answer yet, we still have some time. Feel free to use the chat or the poll that you see on Zoom. And in a bit, I'll just share the answers result that we have. And if you ask me do, if I fully understand my company's business model, then yes, I do understand it. It's very simple, just like I mentioned. Uh, okay, and we have the results as well. Awesome. So for the first question, most of the people, they say that, yes, they do understand the company's business model. And then 35% of people say partially, which means that the company might be evolving with time, which is also not bad. And 9% of people have said that, no, they don't understand their company's business model. For the second question, uh, which is based on the product maturity, uh, so 52% of the people have said that, yes, they do understand the phase of the product life cycle their product is. And then 39% 30, uh, have said that they partially understand uh, the phase of product life cycle their product is in currently. Interesting. So at least we know the type of audience we have right now. Thank you, everyone, for answering the questions. Okay. <clears throat> So now I'll just give a brief introduction of Martin Stahl, who is the chief product officer at Kurali, which is a health tech app. And this community event is in partnership with Kurali. Uh, Martin would be our speaker for today's event. 
and he would be sharing his insights and his knowledge of whatever he has learned from his 15 years of experience uh, in the next few minutes. And thank you, Martin, for joining. Uh, super happy to have you here. I'll hand over the presentation to you and I'll stop sharing. Thank you, Marshall. Um, let me just share my screen. Um, give me a second. So here's my Miro board. Yeah, thank you, Marshall and Product People, for inviting me. Um, I respect what you do on the business side, but I really, really appreciate what you do for the product community. I believe this is very important that we share knowledge, and this is also the reason why I'm here. And happy to share some of my thoughts, how I look at, at uh, businesses, because I believe product is, is business role mainly, and how I look at products. Um, so like Marshall said, I'm Martin. Hi, um, from Berlin, and I'm in product since quite a while. I stopped counting at some point. I don't know, it doesn't matter. In the end, I've been in all kinds of product roles, product manager, product leads, product owners, um, mentor, coach, consultant. Um, so let's put it like this. I'm, I'm a product guy who just loves his job. Most of the days, I would say, not, not on all days, um, of course. Um, and I'm also interested a lot in how organizations, how companies work. Um, that's part also of my role as a chief product officer. But um, I believe if you really want to be successful with your product and how you, you build your product and how you go in the market, you also have to understand how to build up the organization, how your organization works. And I'm also writing on my master thesis on that topic on, on conflicts and dilemmas in scale, scale ups. So that's that's for the hobby, hobby part <laughs> of my life. And of course, you can find me on LinkedIn and I will also share the slides so you don't have to make screenshots now. So um, one word about Kurali. I'm not giving the whole, whole pitch. That's not why you're here for. Um, basically, we are a health platform uh, which try to, to support people with all health needs from staying healthy, acute conditions like I'm sick, I want to talk to a doctor, up to the, the chronic ill people. And because um, we believe there's no full digital journey for health topics, we are also working on a on like a mobile doctor's office, which we can send to rural areas where people can actually access um, medical care. That's that's the idea. We do this at the moment in four countries in cooperation with Helios. So Helios is our Helios Global Health is our mother company, and so we belong in the whole. Fresenius Helios Corporation. So that was a very, very quick um, overview on what we are doing. Have a look on our website if you're interested um, furthermore. But let's come to the topic. So there's a lot of debates about product management. You open LinkedIn, you open uh, Twitter, whatever. What is a PO? A PO is not a product manager. Very smart people from Silicon Valley debate this with a lot of energy. And um, they all have, they're all right, because um, it depends. So I'm team, it depends, right? <laughs> um, and there's so many different contexts. Like I, I just put here some random things which came into my mind, B2C, B2B, we are in business to government in my company also, infrastructure, portfolio, component, um, product ops, you know, all the topics uh, which are debated in the product community. And of course, it makes a difference uh, in which environment you are and, and what, what, you see, what is around you, not only your product, how your product and the business model works, but also how the, the company works. So what I want to present is um, a simple map. It's, it's really simple and it's based around the product life cycle. And um, like, like we said, map is not a territory, map is just like where you, can you know have a look and see what's around you and what's probably the best way to get there where you want to go. So it's highly simplified and generalized, um, but that's that's the whole idea. So what are product life cycles? I guess you are familiar with that. That's no big news. I draw that, so sorry for that. Um, <laughs> most product life cycles we, we know from like classic boxed products, which are in the shelves. 
um, they have this kind of life cycle, which kind of looks like this, like a bell curve. Um, often um, there's like a long tail here in the decline, but the basic idea is at some point you introduce the product um, and, and once it's, it's, it's gaining traction, you make the money, you make the profit. And at some point in time, it's slowing down and going decline. A very famous example is the iPod um, sales. Uh, you see it here, including which model was released. Uh, and they stopped doing um, reportings about the sales of the iPods. But as far as I remember, there were still iPods until recently. So you can imagine the long tail here. Um, but this is a classic product life cycle we see in, in box products. And I believe to some extent it also works for digital products, uh, the space I'm in. Here's another nice life cycle. So I'm, I'm just introducing in the, the topic of life cycle, what kind of models do we have? What, what answer do they try to give? This one is from Crossing the Chasm. This is really like a, a highly, highly recommended book. Um, it's more like a marketing perspective. Nevertheless, I think it's a basic read for product people. Um, and here you also see a, like a, a bell curve, a bell distribution curve, which has um, an early phase where we deal with like very early customer, like we call them early adopters um, or early maturity then in, in the later phase. But the, 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 the interesting part here is that um, once you, you have your product in the minimum set and you have your customers which are also like probably very focused not so broad basically a product market fit um, or a product solution fit a little earlier you come at a point where you go on the mainstream market and there's a gap the chasm right um, and many many companies fail here not because the product is bad but at here in the scale phase the expectations of customers are very different from the expectations of your early customers, right? So this is theory, you probably know that. Um, one story, once I was in a, in a, in a um, e-commerce, big e-commerce in Berlin, I joined here, I would say in early adopter phase and our whole um, sh returns, like people shipping back stuff, like the whole process was a table in the in-house warehouse. So we had the warehouse, which was in-house. And on, on, on hectic days, we, we did packing also from the product management team. But this, this kind of return process, you can't do if you if you're going to mainstream market. In a mainstream market, you have like a professionalized process because people expect that people expect that they get like status reports, status emails, what's happening with the return, when is my money coming? You can't do this with putting um, returns on a table and somebody who has is available will, will pack it. Um, so this is for crossing the chasm. Here you see um, a life cycle which has um, quite a gap um, and it means a lot for, for your work in which phase you are. So you have to be aware in which phase your product is. Let's move on. This is another classic literature, um, also favorite of mine, uh, the startup owner's manual. It influenced a lot of what we see in literature now, um, lean startup and business model canvas, everything is, is basically here in, 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 in the book by, by Steve Blank and Bob Dorf. It, it's, it's different, a little different from the perspective. It's not like a product life cycle, but more like, okay, there are different phases with different activities we have to do, right? So um, I, this is no, no big surprise here. We have your customer discovery and a dust customer validation. So of course we start here with a, with a broad idea of, of the business we want to start, of course, right? But then it's, we still have to search for, okay, what, what is actually a need or what is actually customers who, who might uh, um, um, like, the solution we'll be offering here. And there's of course the pivots. And then there's a phase which when we, at, at the point in time where we know about our customers, we go in execution mode. And the interesting part here is that, that it says company building. So it's not only activities around customer and customer needs, but also we have to scale a company when we scale our product. 
So that's that. There's a lot of lot more insight in this book. So it's just one aspect of the book. This is by Kent Beck, um, the one of the innovators of extreme programming. I want to not to go into too much into that. Um, this is his sticky. Um, it's his um, original uh, drawing. So here you also see um, different activities um, along your product journey or company journey. There's the link, so you can, if you want to read uh, about this, it's quite interesting from a from a uh, programmer's perspective. Um, this one is a little more, I would say, sophisticated um, in detail. It, it's by by Jürgen Apollo, the guy who invented Management 3.0, which quite a handy collection of, of, of tools. And he's now into company designing with the Unfix. Uh, it's called Unfix. Uh, there's the link down here. And he came up with like 10 stages of the business. He calls it business life cycle. And I, I sort it here. Um, that's my sorting. I put it in four columns. Uh, it's not how it's intended, but it's more a linear, linear thing. I, I sort it in four columns. Um, so here you also start with a lot of questions, right? And, 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 and business hypothesis, also hypothesis about your customers, what solution could solve which need. And you also have to discover that. And at some point where you have um, a product market fit, you go in a, in a scale phase, you scale your product, um, meaning you open um, the customers. You not, not only have like, let's say, um, one demographic um, cohort, like, okay, female 25 to 35, I totally made it up. Um, but then you go on a mainstream market and you, you um, extend, enhance your, your um, customers. And with that, you also enhance your feature set, of course. Um, on the company side, you have to do the same things. Um, like in this early stage, in the first column, you properly sit all on the same room and your alignment process means I just shout over the table, hey, how, 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 what is the status about X and Y and C? Let's, let's go to a customer validation session, whatever. Of course, you can't do this later in a later process when you're like, let's say you are like 30, 40, 50 people here in the second column, depending on, of course, your um, financial background here. Um, Usually these stages are also connected to um, VC series um, if you venture capital or private equity financed. Um, nevertheless, your company scales here, you're probably the only product manager or even you're the founder product manager. Here you have the first product managers coming in. Um, you build up like higher first product managers for teams. And this also applies for like every every role, UX, research, marketing, um, sales, you name it, right? So your company grows with your product and at some point um, you switch the mode, like growing the company, growing the, the product in, in, in the feature wise and go in a more in an in-depth um, optimization of the product. So you let's say you look more into the conversion rates of some very narrow elements of the customer journey, like these kind of activities. Uh, and then um, sunsetting at some point in time, um, the product. And um, just a, a side story um, in, when, when you apply to company, which I uh, in charge <laughs> for the product team, this is a very uh, common question I ask, um, how many products did you sunset or how many features actually did you sunset? This is um, quite part of the life cycle, I believe that you also sunset products. So now we come to the, the model, the map I, advertised earlier and I really want to uh, present to you and discuss with you. Let me just check the time. Okay, I'm not too bad in time. Um, this is the Porta Keats model. Um, we, we did this in my former company, a small agile consultancy. Um, we were like a handful of product manager and we're asking ourselves, okay, what kind of product managers should we hire for the customers we have? So based on the product life cycles you've seen before, we came up a very simple um, free, free phase model. Um, Proto Keats, because Keats in Berlin, we call our neighborhoods Keats and 
that's where the product people were hanging out like okay <laughs> so we thought it was funny anyway um we we see here two three phases and again let me let me emphasize this this is highly simplified right so let's let's assume we have three phases we have an explore phase where you do all the discovery and understanding how is the market working what is the customer what kind of customer groups should we have scaling phase which scales the product um, also the organization and then um, a third phase where we go into optimization where we have our product we have our market we have our customers and now we just optimize it on the last part on last uh, conversion rate of the last corner in our product um, and we also have um, here three three levels um, and i will make it short I prepared something earlier, <laughs> of course. Um, so there's a lot of information now, but basically um, we start here with the tactics, like like things you do, um, the focus you have in this phase, uh, what you do around your user, what you do um, in the market also, and also what's happening in the organization. So for the explore phase, um, you have to find your market. Um, of course, you have an idea what you're doing, um, but still you have to answer a lot of questions about which market you go in. Your organization have to, um, you know, set up for the purpose of innovation and hypothesis testing. It's not about bring in like the super um, optimizing, detail loving people. You bring in the generalists who really want to go with ideas and test hypothesis as fast as possible. Um, and, and same more or less for, for scale and optimize phase. Um, in, in a scale phase, typically you scale your product org, like I say, you hire more product managers and each product manager or product owner or whatever you call it in your organization um, own or, or be responsible um, or accountable in Scrum for certain aspects of the, of the, the customer journey or the product. And um, also um, you grow, of course, the product. Um, when, when you had a very simple journey in the beginning, now you have to extend it, right? For example, um, uh, yeah, Zalando started with shoes and here uh, in the scale phase, they, they um, opened the portfolio to, to more articles, to more uh, like clothes um, and later than perfumes and all the kind of things um, they sell nowadays. So that would be um, a typical scale activity um, beside growing, growing the user and the user groups. And of course, you're busy building the actual product. This is a, a very, also very um, strong focus of product. You, all, you I see a lot of uh, product owners here in this phase, like people who work close with the product development teams. And the whole focus is on, on building the, the um the product also like all topics around prioritization stakeholder management this is where the magic is you you don't have that much problems or, or that much challenges about these kind of topics in the explore phase and later an optimize phase your company is already detailed out like you you don't have product manager the head of product you probably have a cpo you have portfolio managers you have all kind of levels in the organization um, and you probably don't talk so much about the product anymore you talk about product groups you talk about features um, and um, maybe it's not so much anymore about the market find your market but um, look at the business at the whole like you have sub companies maybe at this point of time uh, and other like super detailed out um, aspects of the organization. And this also reflects um, your activities and product. For example, here, let's, let's assume you work for a hundred year old car manufacturer in Germany um, and they work with SAFE, uh, you are SAFE PO. Um, the one thing you don't do is um, go out and talk to um, do sales pitches with customers what you do in the explore phase because there are only five people in the room, right? And um, so, like I said, this is highly simplified. And um, I had a, a one, one talk with somebody who works in a hundred year old um, energy company. He said, 
yes, I'm here in Explore. It's like, oh, wait, um, you were at this very old um, energy company, um, state-owned energy company. How comes that you were in Explore? Yes, because we rebuilt the whole product from the scratch, do discovery, uh, do our hypothesis testing, um, fail, um, fail fast, build fast, you know, you know all this, this drill. So like I said, this is highly simplified. And so basically um, I wanted to do a small exercise, but I believe I skip it for now because um, I did talk too long. Um, but the, the, the fun starts um, when you ask yourself, okay, where I am, in which phase, and let me bring this in. Like um, there's another, I prepared something. In this phase, you have a special kind of people or you typically, like I said, it's highly generalized, um, but you typically see um, a tribe which I would call pioneers. So think of America in the wild, wild west where right? they came from, from Europe or from wherever. Oh, that's my timer. So <laughs> just give me two minutes. Um, and they're more like in a settler mode. So it's not the one who come by horse, but they're already like small settlements. And later you have the town planners. I took this from, um, from um, the Wobbly, um, Simon Wobbly, he came up with that a tougher. So basically now it's, it's, it's highly interesting to, to ask, okay, where is my product actually? So let me just do this for me and my company. Um, at Kurali, yeah, we have an idea of our product. We have a product market fit. Um, we have products, different products on the market. We have a CPO, we have um, 20, around 20 people and a product org in, in Kurali. So I would say, okay, we're definitely somewhere in scale, but still um, there's a lot of unclarity how to make money in a highly regulated market. So I, let me put this here, right? Um, but still, as I said, our mother company is Helios and Helios, um, they built hospitals and clinics for a living on scale. So they are definitely not in, in scale mode They're here. They have playbooks for everything. Um, they have all kinds of departments for legal, for, for security, data protection, just everything, they have everything, right? So they're here. So if you wonder yourself why sometimes um, discussions are very difficult, is, is one of the reasons why people in different phases tend to have different mindset or are different kind of people, right? And again, this is highly simplified, right? But here in the, in the, in the explore phase, you need generalists, you need creative people. While here in the optimized phase, you need people who love details, who love to really dive in. And, I, I, and this is not a good or bad thing. Um, it's just about knowing uh, what is your environment you, you're good and which is the environment where, where your company is. And I would, this is me, thanks for, for my ex-colleague Niels who, who draw me. Um, I did maybe this range from early explore to, to late scale, but um, yeah, I love to do explore, but I'm a very structured person sometimes, at least in work. So I would myself put, put also in an early fa um, scale phase. And the last thing uh, is, of course, in each phase, we have different metrics, right? So let's, let's assume we have revenue as a, as a metric. Of course, revenue is always important, but maybe not in, in the early phase, because in the early phase, you just explore the business, right? In scale, revenue is an important metric, right? Because um, this is how you measure your, your success of what you do and the activity. Maybe also if you uh, VC financed, um, the burn rate might be, <laughs> um, might be something. Also very typical for, for, for early scale phase, you, you spend a lot of marketing money. So customer acquisition costs. I mean, it's, it's always important customer acquisition costs, but this is usually very typical in, in the scale phase. While in the optimized phase, you probably don't look too much for revenue. I mean, revenue still might be relevant, but you look for margin. Um, so while here, you, you have totally different 
problems. You 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 just might um, okay number of um, customer interviews, stuff like this. So I stop here. I um, just want to give you um, an overview how how you could look at the product um, and and everything around you, how you put yourself in this map and what it means for your activities and also for, for the conflicts you might have in your organization with your stakeholders. Like very classic is that um, a, a optimized company decides to be innovative and they send all the town settlers in the explore phase. And yeah, sometimes it you're lucky, uh, sometimes not. <laughs> so um, just keep this in mind. Um, and maybe this is helpful for you or what, what, what I presented to you was helpful. Um, and I stop here and um, looking forward to your questions and your feedback. Thank you so much, Martin, um, for this amazing presentation. And I am just going to share back my screen. Just give me a second. Okay. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Awesome. So uh, first of all, thank you so much, Martin. This was an amazing presentation on time. And um, I'm pretty sure at least I learned a lot. Everybody else also learned a lot. We will now have a Q&A session. Um, please share your questions with us by sending them in the chat. Uh, and while you send your questions, uh, you have a few minutes, I'll tell you a bit about what we do in product people. Uh, just make sure you take your time to think about the questions and then you can put those questions in chat for Martin to answer. In the meantime, I'll tell you a bit about the use cases, uh, which are also known as when we engage uh, with different companies. So we work as interim product managers or product leaders. Um, when it comes to permanent position covers, parental leave covers, or important, or when companies have to deliver important or in, um, urgent initiatives, that's where we come in and we onboard and deliver results. Uh, moreover, we also work as product, we provide consultancy as product coaches. Uh, we have product managers and product coaches and product people who can help coach your product management team and create and streamline processes and programs within your company. And the work that we enjoy the most is product discovery, where we discover the next impactful initiative or the product for your company um, by running a low or no code pilot or MVP program. Um, it's also very important to know what we are not doing so that you have an idea of what exactly we are here for. Um, just so you know, we are not recruiters. Uh, we don't source candidates. We, we still are happy to share your role with the community for free. And uh, yeah, um, but we do not uh, recruit for companies. Um, and we're not also free, uh, freelance marketplace. Our team is fully in-house um, and uh, um, the, the team joins us after completing a seven step recruitment process, which is a rigorous recruitment process. And uh, all the team members have a 360 degree uh, feedback sessions after one to three months, uh, which is why we consider ourselves not as a freelance marketplace. We have an in-house team of product managers. Uh, also, we are not a development or design agencies. We specialize in interim product management services coaching and discovery. So in case you need developers or designers, we are definitely happy to help uh, introduce you to a few reliable firms that we have worked with recently. And these are some of the clients that we have worked with, um, including Kurali as well. Uh, Martin is from Kurali, as you all know by now. And these are just a few more clients that we have worked with. This is some of the pro positive feedback that we have received from clients. If you want to know more, you can just visit our profiles and, and get to know uh, about more of the positive feedbacks that we have received from clients. Some very interesting information I have to share. Um, we have a 71% client retention rate. 
uh, where we had clients renew their initial engagements or expand our services to other business units within the client organizations. Uh, we have 40 product leaders and product managers completely in-house to deliver high quality service to our clients. And we have 61% women in our team with 66% in leadership role. This is our amazing team at Product People, um, which is spread across the globe. And here you see an Angiri logo, which means that we still are hiring and you can be a part of our team. Um, some of the open positions that we have right now is of business development representative, growth and partnership manager, and junior account executive. And you can look into more uh, details about the company and the roles that we are looking for on our website. Coming back to the questions. Um, so let's see the questions that we have. I'll go with the first most question that we received, Martin. Um, okay. So Mitchell has a question, uh, which is around matrices. Are there also any matrices to measure in which stage the company is currently at? Martin. Um, but yeah, that's a good I question. believe you answered it, but I believe you kind of answered this question, if I may. Like you, you were there, so. So what, okay. what, what, what do you think um, is, the, is the answer to this question, Michal? I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure that they are because you were highlighting them on a like surface level. However, I understand this is not the meeting when we can go through them and like do a deep dive. But like, uh, would be super cool maybe to know where I should look for them, like any the directions. So so let me let me add something here. Um, again, this is this is very simplified, of course, right? This is just like prototype phases and um, but. In my experience, um, many companies don't really reflect on where they stand and what would be the appropriate metric, right? And a common mistake you see is that um, you go too early for, for revenue, just, just to give an example. Um, because if, if you go hunt metrics, uh, metrics or numbers, um, it, it makes something with your product and it makes something how you prioritize your, your, your topics in the company and in, in, in the backlog. And um, so the metrics and the KPIs you see in your company, in, the, in a company might not be always according to the phase there are, <laughs> if that helps. <laughs> Okay, and like, if I may, but do you think that this is related to the management and their decision, or is it related to some, let's say, investments, or maybe some kind of, I don't know, VC just pushing for them, because, you know, it's a two sides of the coin, basically. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, uh, the way you're financed also influences the way you work. And I al also saw this in, in, in even like seed financing that the investors, they wanted like a, a weekly report on the revenue, which is, if you ask me, difficult or ridiculous, right? Um, nevertheless, and, and it, it always differs from, from the, the kind of business model you have behind your product that also makes a difference, of course. But um, in in explore phase, um, it's important that you validate your business model. You have to validate your your product. That you have a clear pictures of a, of your user and user groups and cohorts, um, and um, you, you really take your time to to test and and and, and um, test your assumption hypothesis. You you build prototypes. You go out to the customer. This is important. If you don't do this, revenue doesn't matter um if you don't do this you will go into scale phase too early and this is is a mistake you see very often and if you go if you look around the startups and re read all the case study this is a typical mistake that um there's something built right so there's an early early product um and then, okay now let's go let's let's fire the it department we have our product let's scale this is a common mistake and and I'm joking now, but um, I, I've been in these companies as, as a product uh, and product lead. And what happens is that you will fail or do like extra turns because you have to go back to, to zero and, and start again. So yeah, maybe I, I, I stop here, um, but there's not like typical things, but 
um, I, I would say um, some things make more sense in uh, one phase than another. Yeah. Thanks, Martin. Hope that answers your question, Michelle. Uh, next question from Pim. Uh, should you as a leader actively manage changes in your organization? <laughs> changes in team setup and processes, et cetera. I like this question a lot. Thanks, Pim. Um, I'm, a, you know, you, you see my picture. I'm in a, like a very early phase. So I've, I've been the first product guy in many companies. So I would say yes, because um, if you don't help with, out with the building the organization, um, you will fail with your product because the product lives in your organization, of course. And if you, I mean, this is not, not our, in our job description. Our job description is, um, solve user needs while having a sustainable business. Um, but if, if we don't support our organization um, in the growing, um, this will be very difficult. And, uh, but you have to be aware this is quite a fight um, because there are many idealistic ideas of how organizations work, and, but they don't. And this is what I learned uh, in my master study about how organizations work. Um, <laughs> um, organizations, they, they tend to have their own rules and they're very different in each company and they, so many aspects come together. And, um, but in the end, you have to consult your, your organization, your company and say, look, um, I'm the first product manager. I have to make sure that we, we have a product market fit that is really scalable. So I'm the guy who, or the, well, who will challenge that all the time? So this is part of my job description. You're probably not the one who's doing the great organizational design, um, but still, you know, ask ask the right question. So is is this is revenue? Just <laughs> to 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 stay with that uh, example, is revenue really the the best uh, KPI we could have, or should we go on user signups? User signup is also a very nice early phase um, metric because this gives you feedback if, if you actually solve a need. Uh, and there are many other ways to, to understand if we solve um, customer needs. So I would answer yes, if you're in an early phase, I would answer no for later phases because um, your role might be too, um, too detailed um, and too, already well-defined, which is not the case in the early phase. Did this, yeah, that, did this help him or what is your perspective on that? I mean, I would assume there is a need for change because you, you mentioned the Helios side of things from your environment is like more stable, exists for a long time and has a lot of established processes, whereas Corley is more in a skill phase. If you would end up going from that skill phase to the next step, I assume you would have to adjust yourself to be more similar to an organization like Helios. Just wanted to get your perspective on that. So thanks. I mean, this is just a map, and it a map can help um, having conversation. And don't get me wrong, I don't believe that product people or UX or whoever, same for sales or marketing or whatever role, probably your role is not building up an organization, but your role is always be, you know. Um, consulting and challenging, asking a question. And so look, this is how I see it. What, how, what is your perspective? And, and we had uh, uh, Michael asked earlier about, um, is it the management's fault? Yes, of course, it's a, no, it isn't. Um, they don't know better, right? So um, we can ask this, uh, we can ask this question, have these conversations. And as, so you as a, as a um, CEO, you as a founder, or you as my group PM, uh, where do you see where the product is? or where do you see our company? And how do you see the next two years? And how should we get there? So these, these are typically the, the conversation we have on the product side, um, but having always this, this map in mind. And um, also I want to mention that have empathy for people who, who come from a different context. Um, and I mentioned people from, from, from a corporate environment, which are used to super structured environment and everything has its place and they have this feeling of security. 
and sometimes they need this. They have this as a need to have this structure, and then they they're assigned to an innovation project. And and this is this is heavy stuff because you can't change yourself within a week or so, right? And so my my plea would be have empathy with the people and 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 try to understand where they are on this map and how they feel about. The, the life cycle of the product and where the company is and where 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 the next whatever. Oh my god, there's an earthquake. I gotta go. I gotta go. There's an earthquake. Oh good Same. luck. Oh shit. Take care. Good luck, Marshall. All right. I hope that everything will be okay for her. Um well, I hope everything will be okay with her. She's uh she's currently based in uh in um uh, in Pakistan. Um all right. We have uh, another question from Joe, um, which is, can you elaborate a bit on what is the best way for product discovery uh, within the company? Support, sales, project management uh, is in your opinion. Um, yeah, thanks for the question. Um, this is quite a topic, <laughs> product discovery. And uh, I believe um, product people had some, some meetups earlier uh, about this topic, about the continuous um, discovery um so i i just can share one aspect of which i learned which is helpful um don't be too too random be structured even in the early phase meaning go out let's say that okay i have 10 interviews in a month or i go out once a week or i we, we discuss one one option per month or something something structured so you have like continuous process uh, along which you can do the discovery um and especially in the early phase it's difficult because yeah you sit all on the ta same table and you just talk to your neighbor and that's the whole process but um to be really successful with the product discovery and in the whole explore phase um come up with a structured something structured it could be very small something light and you improve on this but don't do it too random because uh, it probably won't happen and and you can't build up on your learnings from last week hope this helped oh, thanks very much martin this helped a lot <laughs> um i'm hope i'm actually trying to achieve the structured part which is hard, hard to actually establish the structure itself so thanks very much as, as always, start small, like um, come up with, okay, um, in, in my environment, what would be a reasonable amount of, uh, I don't know, interviews with customers, just to, 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 to take this example, or how mm -hmm. much um, newsletter should we send out with some customer feedback questionnaire or something like that, mm -hmm. just, just keep make like a, um, keep it like a cadence of how you do things. And even if it's super small, it helps you to build up and, and you know, also improve on what went wrong, what went well. So um, don't come up with the whole building at once, start small and go with what is adequate for your company. Mm -hmm. and especially if, if you sit all on the same table, uh, I know the situation and people are just like, why should I write a ticket? I just talked to you sitting next to me. <laughs> yeah okay but at some point in time you have to start with doing small things uh, to build it up <laughs> yeah thanks very much thank you for the question yeah thank you martin i think we had one from christina um uh, who was very interested in the explore phase uh, metrics uh, you mentioned the number of interviews as one of the metrics to follow uh do you have any others that for you are relevant for the explore phase i mean i can i can share some some um, of, of, of me, um, metrics and KPIs, which are important uh, in my time. Um, like uh, for me, it was um, like context with, with uh, real users um, was very important. Um, all kinds of sign up, account creation metrics. Um, also like if we do like wireframe, A-B testing, like very simple things, um, adoption rates, like these kind of things, but um, this is also very product specific, uh, and it, it it might be different in e-commerce than it's uh, in on a, in a medical product where we don't, um, where we have a lot of um, regulatory restrictions. I would say which hinders us from just doing all this 
crazy tests. Um, nevertheless, I want to give the, the question back. Um, um, who, who asked the question? Um, yeah, I just want to give the, the, to the, um, the person who, who asked the question, what, what are your typical metrics in, 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 in the explore phase? What would you say? Or if anybody else has ideas for great explore metrics. I think um, maybe she she's uh, left the meeting so far. All right. Um, I also had. Uh, are you back, Michelle? Everything okay? Yeah. yeah, it was a long one, and it was pretty bad. I think. But yeah, all good. I'm pretty sure uh, things are good out, outside as well because the cars are, the traffic is going on. Otherwise we could have hear something else. But thank you, thank you for the cooperation. It was, I, I'm sorry for uh, going. It's good to have you okay. back. It's good yeah. to have you back. Um, I had a question myself, Martin. Um, it's more of a, what is your personal preference to work with? Uh, what type of phase excites you the most and uh, why is that? Uh, which phase I like most? Yeah. Um, I'm bad. I, I'm, I would say I'm very bad in, in optimizing because I'm more like a general, generalist um, personality. Um, so um, everything which is in an earlier phase, which has to do uh, with like, um, Work, work with uncertainty. So I believe my job description is um, stand in the middle of uncertainty and bake, bake breads out of it. <laughs> so this is the environment which I'm really comfortable with, like uh, not knowing what's tomorrow. This is, this is my, my kind of thing. So um, I, I really like this um, explore, I would say late explore phase because I'm not a strong, vis strong and visionary. Um, there are people who are stronger, who have stronger visionary parts. So this is like at the beginning of, of everything, right? Um, and like I said, I like to structure stuff. So that makes me early, early scale phase. And uh, yeah, so that's where I would put myself in. Was that the question or? <laughs> yes, yes, that was the question. So what's your, what's your phase, Jan? Curious to hear. Well, I think I'm at uh, product people to uh, experience all the phases and the very different products and in industries. So um, I think I still have a couple of years uh, in uh, experience before I can uh, pronounce myself uh, on, uh, on that exactly. But uh, I've enjoyed working very much in our earlier, uh, earlier phases um, so far. So maybe that will continue as well. I'm uh, not sure we have any uh, more questions. Uh, on the chat. Uh, we have a couple of minutes late left, uh, everyone. So if you would like to uh, jump in with the last question, this is your time. Otherwise, we will be uh, stopping the recording soon. We have another one from uh, CJ. What is the... Okay, that was a joke, CJ. Thank you very much. Uh, I do not know what is the best variety of apples. All right, I think, uh, I think that calls it uh, for today for everyone. Thank you very much for joining everyone. We will stop uh, the recording now and uh, have a great evening. Thank you, Martin, so much uh, Thank you. For, uh, for, uh, for your call, for your presentation. And uh, have a good evening, everyone. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Have a great one. Thank you, bye. Thank you. Bye.